Clements, UMass Extension. We're at Clarkdale Fruit Farms here with Tom Clark, who's the owner, co-owner of, of this older little uh, little operation here in the Happy Valley of Massachusetts. Uh, we've got a group here that are mostly uh, some landscapers, um, one or two orchards, and we started looking at some of these semi-dwarf trees here, the old-fashioned trees, and we're having disagreements on how to prune these. branches but we have some room to get in there push the tree back a little bit but we're not going to do heading cuts right you want, what, what, you want to look at another one sure let's, let's what, you know, what, what you look at these empires or, sure. or actually that's, that's, a, that's uh, a different tree than so come on facebook is anybody watching should can you tell if anybody's we will, should one, one person i think oh probably can who is it there's two people. Who are they? Christian Smith. Chris, I'm not sure the other Christian Smith. Chris Smith said he wants us to prune the tops of some trees. That was, a, uh, that was probably a mauling seven there. I think these are uh, mauling seven. Two of these are with the bell off. Odd early apples. What? Can't find it anymore. Well, let's, we don't have a chainsaw. Somebody must have a saw with them. We need not forget to bring any saws. <coughs> no. Can't you get it with that? Yeah. There's our Facebook Live. But come, on, come on close. Don't hesitate. It's hard to get the whole tree in. Uh, all right, close. okay, all right. Let me, if anybody has questions or comments, go ahead and shout them out, okay? You're using a little rocker thing there to help orient the camera if necessary? Okay. What are we doing, Tom? Well, actually, we should have a chainsaw here, but we'll, we'll cut off some of the stuff. What do you think he should, where, do you, where, where, would, he, where would you start here? Come on. Any of the forks. Any of the bigger forks? Christian Smith says chainsaw. <laughs> if I could get my act together, I'd turn my... Uh, General vertical wood is not so great. We've got kind of a lot of weight starting to develop out here, so I could potentially um, you know, get rid of some of that. You know, this is 
become problematic and I'm not sure I like it, but what am I going to do now? I think I'm going to cut that back to that. Maybe leave some fruiting wood here for another year or two. Chris is telling you to start at the top. Well, Tom's going to do the top. I'm getting there. He's got a unit just like this. But no, so, Tom, what if, I mean, this is awful tight. You guys come in here and pick up first. You guys, you know, they sell apples in their little store in there. The customers in the Happy Valley, and you know, it's a Happy Valley for a reason because they're kind of happy go lucky, and we're kind of happy go lucky. They're kind of happy go lucky, and you can you can get by with selling some fruit that maybe if you were selling it in Stop and Shop, you might not get I've by. I've cut this whole limb off. I cut that one off with a chainsaw. So it's time for that one to go. Here's my here's my leader going back here. I'm gonna get rid of some of these big branches. Maybe this one I'll cut off next year, but for now. So what's wrong with that branch? stay and, and well keep the height down. I don't want the top to get too tall. got a lot of nice, I've got some fruiting buds in here, but I've got a lot of nice small wood. On all those branches I did, I think I do anyways, what do you Is that tree okay? Yep. Does it meet the Berkshire seal of approval? Kind of, maybe. Perfect. <laughs> is that more what you, you did it, so it's perfect. Is that, is that more what you had in mind? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, you know, Tom and Ben and you know, they're probably tolerant. You're not you don't need to be growing US extra fancy every apple, do you? No. So really, I mean, it can't be bad apples, but it doesn't have to be U.S. And, you know, so you guys, are these are these our noble apples that you're talking about? Because if this were an Evercrisp, when I walked in, you were mentioning that. I want that to have a lot of sun. A Pink Lady has, you have to have it completely exposed. So honestly, I would thin this down even more myself, but... 
Oh, this, yep. is a, this is a Biscadella. You ever hear of Biscadella? Sure. Early apple. Yeah. You pick it the right day, it's good. Mm -hmm. You're two days too late, and it's lush. It's, uh, it, short of that branchy stub back, Brad, come off. We've got a nice light top. We started recycling branches around the top. Didn't I teach you to do that? Or do yeah, do? I did. And then we got our lower table. The like, Lord taught me that. I like, good. I like our lower table there where we can get some sun on us. I'll tell you, you know, yes, quality is important, but you got to have production too because it's also pretty hard to make money unless you get the production. It's, it's a, these are fine lots. And that's, you know, why I like the high density system too because, I mean, it's easier to keep light onto all the apples. Trees like this, you know, even inside there, you're going to have some shade. We done enough of these semi doors. Yep. What we should, what, what should we do now? We do just, yeah, let's head down that way. I mean, where's, where's Al? What is that? We got Al Rose is from Red Apple Farm up in Phillipston. Al has a fairly similar type of operation as the, as Tom Clark. A little types of trees. A little more, a little more type A. Al's a little more type A personality. Um, Al, what's your take? I mean, I, I, I think you're never wrong with pruning. It's whatever style you have and your goals. And I agree with Tom. You have to look at each apple. It's variety. It's different it's variety. You don't sell it. What are you going to yeah. do with it? It's hard. I, do, I think retail and wholesale is totally different on your goals. But I do agree, agree with Everchris. You want as much sun as possible. And um, I think whatever system you do, you better stick with it. Because I, I you can't change systems, right? Can't be go, we can't be going and cutting off big branches now, in general, we'll except maybe in the top. Way. Yeah, that, that one going that yeah. way and the top coming back. So we have to work with what we've got, you're right. This was the old, I mean, this was, you know, a central leader with lower scaffolds, five or six lower scaffold branches, <laughs> excuse me, and they're just managing all these and, you know, like Al said, as long as you get some pruning done, it's probably okay. If you use thinning cuts. Not any cuts. Um, to thin out where you started the tree. All right. Chris okay. says Al rules. <laughs> <laughs> and he's wondering where Ben is. Ben is watching his sixth son. There you go. Yeah. Ben, ben is babysitting. Sorry about that. All right. Let's go. Let's go look at something else. You lead the way. I'm not sure the best. Well, you want to go down to the, the mop up? <laughs> yeah. Go back to the. To the Well, then we went to three feet in a row that are 
12 foot rows planted later. So this is roughly four feet between trees supported with a conduit and a single wire. Yep. With arguably you should have some permanent branches at the bottom of the tree. Are these honey crisps? No. no. Never grew that so well. What, what's this system? Come on, somebody on somebody on Facebook. What it, what's a four foot between trees with a single wire and a conduit? Well, I call it vertical axis, and it's a it's it's it, it's kind of was after we did the freestanding central leader. This is okay, Tom. I only typically a vertical axis though. We don't. Try and keep some bottom Bigger branches ones. going for a longer period of time. Now you already pruned this. So, yeah. You know, once you already pruned a tree, it's kind of hard to go back and put it back together. Um, but again, we've got that focus central leader. We don't have any big branches left because he cut them all off, which is okay. But so to me, I looking, have at, more looking at this, I mean, I just it's hard again to. Looking at this, though, to me, these trees are going to blow out a little bit. And what rootstock are these? 26. These are M26, which is a fairly, for a dwarf rootstock, fairly vigorous. I mean, and I'm guessing you cut these quite a bit because they were kind of getting... Even pruned, so let's go look at something that we can actually do. I didn't, I didn't ask you whether you had already pruned them, did I? So what else have we got in here? We got some galas. I know we got some yeah, galas. Two rows of Max. Those are Linda Max there. Actually, I, think I, uh, I did one. I did one five of these. You gotta make sure that graft union is well above ground level because if it's close, you're gonna get more vigor in the tree. And then look, Chris Smith, you got a real problem up there. One of the one of the issues with galas, it does like to grow up high, but we got a lot of strength in this trunk and this tree. And management at that top becomes real problematic. And I don't even want to go there. Obviously, that's a problem. Now, a top that looks like that is really what we're looking for. Or that one. Once you start having to make these big cuts like this in the tops of these trees, you know, bigger control gets to be a real problem. That's been a problem. Yes, I see where I've cut the top. I see that. Look where your grafting and planting depth is. That should be a good, that grafting should be still a good six inches above ground level. And these trees would have been less vigorous, but that's, it's water over the dam, so it's not. But I, Let's go look at some trees that aren't pruned. Can you find some? It's hard, it's hard to put trees back together. I always. Um, the other end of this row is. I think we we'll get down this. Are you guys interested in this? Nope. Yeah, look. I think the other end of this row is. Um, see if I can find it. Those galas were pruned, but there's not much to do with it. I can see you decided to prune the little trees first. Yeah, that make it easier. Because they're easier. <laughs> Mentally. Oh, these trees are these. I'm a 70 year old guy. Men Mentally, they're much easier. Right? Mentally, they're much easier. Well, let's. Well, what were you thinking here? I don't know. I was trying to save stuff here. I don't know. Here, cut it off. Well, you know, you generally in this type, all these branches, you know, we should have small, relatively small fruiting wood like this. This, this type of cut, it looks like you left a stub. It's interesting because if the tree's got too much vigor, you leave a stub, you'll get these long, real vigorous shoots growing up. But now, you know, Tom, I don't think you can live with this. Yeah, cut it off. Get it out of there. My, my pruner won't. 
to be warmed up. Oh, man, I got to turn it back on. You know, one thing that, you know, this type of system, though, once you get going, you can just walk right down this. Again, it's you should cut out two or three of the biggest branches. And you failed to cut this branch out, but you don't ever do this kind of cut because that's not going to, it's going to happen. This is going to all blow up and go up. Tom, um, you even got to cut this one out. You can't have that. These gales, you really want, yeah, that's okay. You can leave stubs. But you really want all just small renewal and fruiting wood through here. Um, really interesting. How these are developed. Um, don't cut too much out of it. These are interesting because you know I, I, I have to I, I ask myself if I had pruned these from day one, would they look any different? Would they look the same? Are you getting good advice from your extension people at UMass? <laughs> yes. Does your extension Are we listening to Does your extension people at UMass ever even show up? No, hardly not. Um, you know, we've asked. Like, so this tree here isn't bad. You got some pretty nice small branching going through here. You made a couple of good cuts and stuff. So like another one up there. You have the whole way. We, yeah. Okay. Oh, well, you want to start there, but you know, watch the wire. No, that's the problem with these yeah. corners. Yeah. When I get to the tops of these, if You know, if you've got to start cutting to limit tree height into big wood, you've got a problem. And I'm not, you know, it, I'm just saying you have a problem. The problem here is these trees are all planted too deep. Nothing I can do about it now, but... Well, the guy didn't tell me how to plant them when he told me to shoot them. Yeah, that's, you're right. I agree with you. Um, that's, that does, these get difficult because you can't let it get up too high. How, how, how high can these trees go? Yes. Go to 12 feet. No, no, the rule of thumb is that if I cut this tree off the base, it can't be any taller than the next, if getting the next tree over. Which, now it's not probably. It was, because you had to cut that big piece off. Mm -hmm. These are a little bit of a, what root stock? These were M9s, weren't they? Oh, these galas? Yeah, yeah, but I mean, they were M9 strain. So, so I don't nine. know what, you're done pruning in here? I got a full brush out. Oh. I don't think I came down this side of this road. Went down the other side. Um, you know, I don't know what to say because I, I, I frankly am not sure I'd like to prune these trees. So the other thing is, I, which you, you probably should have done a little more. You know, once you get what's left, all these really should be singled out pretty much to one piece. like this, like this, um, we do this, um, I'm going to lighten it up a little bit in here, I think you're a little thick still, yes? Yeah, I got tired of pruning. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Faster that's, a little, the that's a little better now, maybe a cut or two with the, who's got the pole pruner? But you know, I do a little more cutting up there. And you, you, can't, you probably can't. You can't uh, with this kind of thing. No, we go cut. We're we're going going to cut another one or two. I don't know anything. It just doesn't matter that much. The big, always the bigger stuff. That's fine. Cut this one off over here if you want to.
feed back into these trees and make the trees even bigger and more vigorous just to keep the big branches out yep. and it helps okay. helps because these these really i mean there's a that's a lot of you know carbohydrate production coming off the leaves on that during the summer and that just feeds back into the vigor of the tree so but if you get small wood like this with fruit on it less less big wood it, it will keep the tree a little smaller i think okay these are what? So these are how many years old? I mean, they're 11, 12 years old, 11 yeah. years old. And this orchard has been good, yeah. very productive. Oh, just kind of simp simplify some of these a little bit. Just let some. Uh, yeah. cut this one off. You know, it's nice if you can have one guy work one side of the tree and another guy work the other side of the tree at the same time. So then you can you know what's going to get cut off. What do you want? Oh, I'm cut this off. Leave the stub. Cut, cut that other one off right above the wire. Simplify it. Simp okay. Simplify this, simplify this. So you don't think these are going to become big limbs and mm -hmm. go right up and shade everything well, I'm below? I'm trying it? to think um, right now of letting a little energy soak up there. Might. Well, you really run into problems. I mean, look at the top of that tree. I know, I know. See, you got bigger branches on the top of that tree. And you have them because, well, maybe you're right. Maybe you should cut that off. I don't know. But you had to cut that off to limit height. And that goes back to planning depth. But now what would you do up there? Go ahead. Yeah, I'd, I'd cut off and leave this one right here. So that may be not.
okay, that tree. generally is bad. So let's cut them out. I like I like I like them to look like this. You know, I like to say, because I mean some of this, you know, part some of this is redeveloped from cuts I made and I got some new wood coming in. I can't cut all that. I can't cut all this out. Maybe next year I'll cut one of those out. But I think, you know, some of the, I'm using thinning cuts, I'm trying not to do heading cuts, some of the same, I'm maintaining my central leader. Yeah, this is... John, before you cut yep. that, I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. If, if I was by myself doing it, mm -hmm. I would cut this here, because you get the growth going off. So you cut this like right here? Yeah. It, you know, what do you all think of that? I was <laughs> thinking you'd be... <laughs> no, I'm I wouldn't do that, but... I'm no, I want to know why you wouldn't know. Well, you got some fruit here, no doubt. So you, you know, I might, what do I do with that piece? Well, if you're right, I think it's still there. Is the piece I cut off? I do like the occasionally okay, like reconstruct the piece. Yeah. I'm trying to make sure I don't cut my finger off of these damn ones. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't, this was it, Tom? I can't live with this. I mean, if I want, if I decide I want to keep this and pick fruit off it this year, I'd at least do this. Yeah. And I'd cut off next year for sure, but, you know, this is a little bit problematic. And you just, you know, as if you, it just didn't work very good. I don't know why, but you know, he made a, something happened here, made a cut or something, but how, how, old, is, stub, how old is this piece of wood? Years ago, how old is this came? I know, how old is this piece of wood? This is two, this is three years old. Years old. Um, it probably, you know, maybe it gets, I don't know what you did to make it look like this. Todd made it look like this. Let's cut it off. I really, you know, you just can't have these big branches. I mean, there's probably still plenty of fruit on this tree. And if I counted the flower buds, let's say, how many apples do you want in this tree? 60? 80? 80? For daily, you want fewer because you can cut some size out. 80? 70? Yeah. If I start counting flower buds, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, yep, I count fast. 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 38, 40, 42, 46, 15, 15. Well, let's say there's 80 flower buds on here. With five flowers per apple, that's 400 apples still right now. So I can afford to lose some more wood. Yeah. Still, maybe. I don't know. Just thinking out loud. Now, we're not going to set five apples on every cluster. But let's say I have 80 buds. Probably more than that, actually, because I don't count accurately. I could still cut some more off because I don't really want an apple on every bud either. I want some resting buds. Yeah. But, you know, the problem is, especially where you've got trees that are planted too deep, I'm kind of harping on that, aren't I? Yep. But it's 
my fault. Because I wasn't here. Yeah. You didn't tell us that. stuff get too big I don't you know I don't know how you see it's kind of funny you, how you got a lot of vertical stuff coming out of these stub cuts a lot of times we make a stub cut like that we'll get maybe one coming out here and one coming out here I know. Well, we, can cut this, we can cut this one off and you got this one out here but that doesn't always happen I like you know the the trip now here's this is this is better we made this kind of like bevel cut I, you know the, the people are doing more and more of this I don't like it I still like to kind of go in and like do that kind of thing. I like to put my I like to put my pruners. I guess this one worked pretty good. Did again. I think from Facebook Live, we've been going for half an hour or so. When you finish it, will you just hit save so I can look at it later and laugh at myself? And Before we sign out, Chris what? had one question. Sure. Do you recommend heading top back above the wire? <sighs> no. I'd like, I'd prefer, I'd, I'd rather crop and flop it if I could. What I mean by that is if I can get that, let that go and end up looking more like this before I cut it, um, I prefer it. I, you know, when you start making these big cuts, I mean, this isn't terrible. I would have let that, I would have tried to cut that a little higher. No. More like, I mean, yeah, you gotta, you can't let them get too high because then it's going to block sunlight going into the next row. Unfortunately, uh, I don't like when we have to make cuts like this. Um, but if these trees were a little less vigorous, we could let that grow up and flop over and crop and then we could come in and cut that flopping wood back yeah. to an upright. Yeah. That's the ideal situation. When you have to start doing that, I guarantee you that's going to blow out a little bit this this summer. With, you know. but this tree's got a problem. This tree's got a problem. What are you talking about that? You've got the change. There's a bunch of problems. Here. What are the problems here? That's what we said. Too much, too much moisture? Too much rot? Signing go. Yes. I'm sorry. Bye. Thank you for coming.